Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be going over the synastry chart between Lacey Peterson and Scott Peterson. You know what happened there. So I'm going to be pulling up all of the aspects and the conjunctions that collaborate that she was murdered by him. His moon conjuncts her south node by one degree. This indicates a past life connection. When you have a planet conjuncting your south node from the other person, specifically moon, sun, Venus, it's karmic and it's a past life connection. Her north node conjuncts his ascendant by two degrees. That is a, that's fate. Now there's an asteroid called Scott. It's a PNA, that means personal named asteroid. In their synastry chart, his Eros, which has to do with eroticism, conjuncts her Scott asteroid by zero degrees, and her Eros conjuncts his Scott by one degree. Can't make this up. I've seen this before, and this is another indication of fate. Uh, zero degrees, one degree on both sides, fate. There's another PNA called Rocha, and that's her maiden name. His Rocha and Pluto conjuncts her vertex by two degrees. This is another indication of a fateful relationship. Um, his swindle also conjuncts her vertex. Swindle, self-explanatory, but it also has to do with cheating. So that's what he brought to her. Whatever touches your vertex from the other person, a planet, asteroid, it will bring the energies of that asteroid or planet to you. The vertex is another really important part of the chart. It's like a second ascendant. So what did he bring to her? Well, Rocha is conjuncting his Pluto. Pluto is the modern ruler of death. So now don't get all flipped out and think that if someone else's Pluto touches your vertex, that they're going to kill you. Uh, it's not that simple. You have to take into consideration all of the other aspects in the synastry chart to verify the particular plot or theme of the whole relationship. Now, her Juno, which has to do with marriage, Roche and De Janeiro, which is a victim asteroid, conjuncts his moon by two degrees. So... What happened in this relationship? She was a victim uh, of the marriage and her maiden name is right in there. Uh, his Nessus as centaur, which always has to do with abuse, conjuncts her Venus by zero degrees. Zero degrees is the tightest orb that you can get. And um, this is just extreme abuse that will end up in not a good situation. You don't want any bad asteroid or uh, negative energies from a planet conjuncting your personal planets, such as, you know, Venus, Mars, Moon, and Sun, especially. His nemesis asteroid, which has to do with an enemy, conjuncts her Philomela asteroid in Aries, two degrees. Now, Philomela was a uh, woman that was brutalized by a man that was supposed to protect her. And so he cut out her tongue because he didn't want her telling anybody what happened between them and what he did to her. And then after he cut out her tongue, he abandoned her. Now, <laughs> the Philomela is in Aries, two degrees, and Aries uh, is ruled by Mars. Mars um, has to do in, in a, when somebody dies or is killed, it's, it has to do with a violent death. And Aries rules the part of the body that has to do with the head. So she, when she was found, not only was her tongue cut out, but her head was gone as well. Oh, I can't believe this. I can't, are there really people out there that think that he's innocent? Seriously? Because there's more. Uh, his Osiris, which is Egyptian god of the dead, in his eighth house, which rules death, falls into her fourth house. 
which has to do with the home and the family. And that's where she was killed. His Requiem asteroid, which is a death marker, it has to do with uh, the funeral for the dead, in the fourth house, conjuncts his south node in the eighth house, which is the house that rules death. So we've got a lot of death dagger things going on here. Uh, her requiem conjuncting his south node, that's what will she'll bring to the relationship. His Neptune, god of the sea, and Bellerophon and Narcissist conjuncts her north node, two degrees. Her north node is in the eighth house, which rules death. Wasn't she eight months pregnant? I just had to throw that out there. I don't think it's a coincidence. You may think it is, but the more you do charts and the more you see how everything comes together, it's, it's not a coincidence. Now, whatever touches your north node from the other person means that it will be the theme of the relationship for you. So in this case, Neptune, uh, there was a lot of illusions and fog that she didn't see him the way she thought he was when she met him. It, it, it created, it's like looking at somebody through rose-colored glasses. Um, and narcissist, he, I think he's more than a narcissist, but he's definitely in that, you know, classification. And Bellerophon has to do with accidents. So that was the theme of the relationship for her. You don't want any, you don't want any negative asteroids conjuncting your North Node because it won't be a, a very happy relationship in the long run as well as you need positive moon aspects between two people. Moon conjuncting the moon, moon sextiling the moon, moon trining the moon. They didn't have that. Now, her asteroid bride and the asteroid Melopomene conjuncts his descendant by two degrees. Bride, self-explanatory. Melopomene has to do with tragedy. His groom and Chiron conjuncts her ascendant by three degrees. So now we've got her bringing to him a tragedy to the bride and him is bringing, the groom bringing her pain because it's conjuncting her ascendant, which is a really important part of the sinistry chart as well. The angle, the angles are the ascendant, the descendant, the midheaven and the IC. His Jupiter, and Lachesis, Lachesis is a death marker. It's an asteroid. It conjuncts her midheaven, two degrees. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. So whatever it touches, it magnifies. And in this case, death, conjuncting her midheaven means the whole world saw this trial and it was, you know, nationally known. The midheaven has to do with the, what the public will end up seeing. In your relationship. His finale, a death asteroid, conjuncts her south node by two degrees. So what did he bring her? Final, finalizations. Her Ixion asteroid, Ixion is, uh, means murder. In Scorpio, ruled by Pluto, it's in her seventh house and it conjuncts his requiem, death marker, Funeral of the Dead, and Ixion by three degrees. Wow. Okay, so let me go over this again. Her Ixion, the murder asteroid. It's in Scorpio, ruled by Pluto. Pluto is the modern ruler of death. It's in the seventh house, which has to do with committed relationships. It conjuncts his requiem, which is a death marker and Ixion. So now we've got death markers on both sides and who's responsible for the death? His Scott asteroid sextiles her Ixion exactly zero degrees. Sextile is a uh, 60 degree angle 
and uh, the energy flows easily on that, on a sextile. So her Chiron, this is in her natal chart now, her Chiron, which has to do with pain, conjuncts her Atropus, which is a death asteroid, by two degrees. That means that she's going to have a painful death. His Atropus squares her sun and Phoenix, two degrees. Atropus killed her behind the scenes, and in her natal chart, sun is conjuncting the asteroid Phoenix, which has to do with death. Okay, now this gets really interesting in a, you know, people could say, oh, this is just another coincidence. It's not. His Andraka asteroid, that has to do with evilness. It conjuncts his north node natally by two degrees. Whatever conjuncts your north node in your natal chart will uh, be the theme of your life, either your life purpose or a basic theme around your life. And so what was the basic theme of his life? Evilness. Now, there's an asteroid called Connor, and Connor was the name that they were going to give to their, um, to their son when, when he was born. Well, obviously that didn't happen because, you know, unfortunately... That asteroid Connor conjuncts his north node. So we have evilness towards Connor conjuncting his north node. Oh, uh, what else? There's something. I missed something with this explanation. Oh, his Andreka asteroid, the evil asteroid, also conjuncts her Connor asteroid. So we've got Con Andraka conjuncting her Connor, her Connor conjuncting his North Node, um, and that conjuncts, it's a sign of Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn, and Saturn is the ancient Lord of Death, which is in her fourth house that rules the family and the home. She was killed at home. Okay, so I thought, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it didn't get too confusing towards the end. I know it can be difficult to understand it if you don't see the chart and all the interactions in the inner chart natally and the outer chart, his um, natal, you know, plugged in together. But um, I hope you have a nice day and uh, hit the subscribe button to keep in touch with more celestial vibes. Have a nice day.